What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a little bit of a Muay Thai tutorial. We are talking about taking control of your partner from the clinch and executing the side knee. This unfortunately doesn't matter if I'm teaching my kids program, if I see people at seminars, even fighters, amateur fighters around the world. This is something that many people struggle on and many people are doing incorrectly. So hopefully today, after this tutorial, you will have a better understanding of how to execute the side knee properly. First guys, let's let it be said that a side knee to the body is nowhere near as effective as a knee down the middle. So you might be asking, okay, why should I bother learning it then? Well, a couple of reasons. Number one, anybody who is good at Muay Thai will know that they want the hips close together, which means it's very difficult for me to get that straight knee up. If we get this type of distance, then it's super easy for me to punch that knee in, but that's not always the case. Sometimes I only have space to execute a big side knee. And also, when you're at the gym and you're training with your partners, nobody wants to take a knee straight into the stomach. When I was in Thailand, it was complete no-no. You were not allowed to knee to the stomach in hard clench work. If we were going light, we could get away sometimes with kind of like tap, tap, but nothing really hard. But to the side, you can throw very, very powerfully. But that's assuming you're doing everything right. So let's start off and let's talk first about what your striking area is if you're in a fight and if you're training. Very, very different. If I'm in a fight, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna throw this leg up and I'm gonna blast my knee into the ribs. If I'm in training, I'm not gonna utilize the knee, I'm gonna slide slightly up and use the inside of my thigh. That's why when you see people doing clinch work who are good, it sounds like they're going really hard. I can be here and go and get that slap, but it's just because it's thigh versus ribs. A very good, effective way to practice building power on a technique that definitely requires power to do any real damage. If you just throw it up, kind of like ugh, and hope it does something, well, it absolutely will not, even if you're using your knee. So technique is so important on this particular knee. So let's get into the details. First of all, as soon as you fall to the clench, you want your hips square. If I go like this, in kickboxing or Muay Thai and somebody's in the clinch with me, they're gonna fire that straight knee right up to my stomach because I went from here with my torso to here. So it's very important that we have our legs square. Once we have our legs square, we need to recognize if I lift one foot off the ground, I'm going to fall to the side. So the same idea here, if I try to shift all my weight over this leg to create a counterbalance to falling, and now I try and throw this leg out to the side and knee, the power is so minimal, it's not even worth doing. But many people try to do that. They'll be in here and they'll just go like this and there's no power and you might as well not even do that. What you need to do is learn how to take one leg to the other, almost shuffle it completely out. Now from here, I've created more space from my opponent's torso. Before, if I was like this and I went up, I don't have much space to draw that leg in, but when I shuffle step, now I can bring this way up and throw it in with so much force. So the very first thing I like to get people to do when I'm learning, so the very first thing I like to get people to do when I'm teaching this is basically, I call it like a clock. You know how a clock, an old school clock, has a big hand that swings back and forward? You're gonna do that with your feet. You're gonna throw one foot out and then the other foot out. And if I have a partner or a wall that I can hold on to, I can just go like this. I bounce, click, 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 click. And I'm just basically doing that motion. Once I have that motion down, then I can just overthrow my leg, whoop, and now I've created lots of space to ram it into my partner's ribs. The whole time making sure everything is square. I'm always straight on to you guys. I'm not turning my body. I'm staying right front and center as I throw this leg up. Just double bounce, double bounce. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And I just knock that leg out. Once I've got that motion down and my leg is completely out to the side, then I can bend it, get to that position there where my foot is more or less below my knee and I can huck that leg completely in with lots of force. So if I was standing here, I don't want to stay really low. I don't want to stay down here and go, 
uh, and try to lift it up, I stay nice and high. I almost stay on the balls of my feet. I swing out, I get nice and elevated while still making sure I'm connected to the floor. I don't want to come up and go like, oh, and fall because I'm trying to literally jump. I'm still sliding, but just staying elevated. And then from there, I can bang that leg right in to the rib cage. Now, exiting the knee is very important as well because if I come over here and then I throw my knee and then I step down, I kind of cross my feet together, that's no good. Right from here, I'm an easy target to get thrown down. So I need to make sure that I come out of it the same way I went in. I come up, huh, I shoot my leg out a little bit and then I back my leg back to where it started. Up, in, and back out. With my hips square, nice and tight to my opponent. I got a double hand crunch right now. I'm just making it like I have their bicep. I have this position here. Hips are nice and tight. Little bit of a bend, but still keeping the weight out of my heels. Now from here, I can shuffle step and get right back to there. Nice and balanced, minimal amount of time where I give this guy the opportunity to throw me. This is a difficult drill to work on your own unless you actually utilize the techniques I gave you today. If you're just trying to do it in shadow boxing, you're just like, okay, I'm shadow boxing, I fall to the clench, and you don't know the technique, and you're just kind of like, ugh, ugh. That's a terrible way to practice. I would say number one, get with a partner, practice back and forth, or find a wall and practice just hoop, and just go through that motion until you get the balance down on it. And then when you're shadow boxing, occasionally you can imagine, okay, I got to the clinch, shuffle step, bang, and then right back down. But for me in shadow boxing, I never do these type of knees, never ever. I always focus on the straight knees because those are the ones that create damage. The inside clinch stuff is just me staying active and trying to find an opportunity to off balance and throw my opponent. That's the way I look at it. I've been kneed in the side of the ribs by many people in many fights. It does nothing to me. Never been hurt by them, probably never will. So it's more them scoring points, staying active, and then hoping that I will reciprocate the knee so that they can throw me after. But it's still very important that you guys get this motion down and you understand clenching and knees from in tight. Hopefully guys, you found this tutorial super helpful. It's something that most people need to work on. If it was right up your alleyway, that's perfect. If you enjoyed the video guys, please give it a like if you haven't already joined the channel and get subscribed. Train hard guys, I'll see you back here soon for another video.